Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how you can get a really soft coloring look with watercolor pencils like I did in this card. Now, um, to contrast, this is something I did with watercolor pencil and, col and colored pencil too, and it's a really vivid look. And if anybody's interested in this, just leave a comment below and let me know if there's enough people that want to see it. I'll do a demonstration on this as well. But today we're going to work on this. And I have a stamped image. Um, it's a house mouse stamp here, this fan, and um, we need a thank you card for the kids coach. So here I have this fan, it says thanks, and when you open it up it says thanks uh, for being our biggest fan. And here's a little pocket that you can actually put um, a gift card into since the kids have all chipped in for a gift card for coach. So I thought that that would be fun for them all to sign. And there's plenty of room for everyone to write in that card. Now I want to share a little tip here um, for the matting layer. What I did was um, I actually cut this out of the middle of the matting layer because you're not going to see that when you layer it up. So that's a way you can save some postage and also get a little more mileage out of your materials. So keep that in mind next time you're making a card. All right, I'm going to set my papers to the side. I'm working on a um, ch on a clipboard, which is a hard surface, which is great for doing um, colored pencil. And I've put the colors that I'm going to use in a jar, and that's usually what I do when I'm working on a project, so I don't reach for the wrong gray or whatever. And um, I these are the Primo watercolor pencils, and what I did was I actually took a washi tape to determine what um, kits these came out of. So these here with the orange stripes came from the soft neutral set. And then they're also found in the scenic root and the skin and hair set if they have these two bands on them. This, these two with the black are from the uh, earth tones and the two from the pink are from the basics. No, they're from Spring and Fall. I'm sorry, the ones with the pink are from Spring and Fall. So I made myself a little color key too in case I forgot where everything came from. But it was just a good way for me to keep my pencils organized since now I'm putting them right in a jar on my desk so they're easier to find. And my actually my Spectrum Noirs I put in a coffee can from my favorite coffee, Cafe du Monde from um, New Orleans. So yeah, I've never been there, but somebody sent me coffee back from there. It was so good. I love it. Um, all right, so we're going to get started with the coloring. And um, also, I've been asked, what do I use to sharpen my pencils? Well, any good handheld sharpener is great. This one's a Fiskars, I believe. Um, but, you know, any nice sharp handheld one, I prefer. That way I know they're not going to get chewed like they might in a, a regular pencil sharpener. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take this 09, which is like a coral color, and I'm going to give my mice some color, some pink in their cheeks and their ears. Okay, this is this is um really really easy. You don't have to be too fussy. Now I'm gonna go back in with this um 05, which is just kind of like a um light peach color, and I'm gonna color in the feet, ears, tail, all that jazz. Now the thing we're gonna we're gonna do something um that may be new to you if you're new to watercolor um pencils. Actually, it's you know, it's not actually well used in watercolor pencils. It's more well used in like markers, but we're actually going to use a watercolor blending marker. And the one I have is by Tombow, but you could use a Dove blender. You could use a Stampin' Up blender. I like the Stampin' Up blenders. They're really good. Tombow one seems to be good too. The Tombow one, as you'll see in a minute, has one end that is um, like a hard bullet end and one end that's a brush end, whereas the Stampin' Up ones have two brush ends. And the Dove Blenders, which I've never used, but I've heard they're really good, have um, have replaceable nibs. And I think they're a bullet. I'm not 100% sure. So if you have a Dove Blender and you want to weigh in on that, please leave me, uh, leave me a note in the comments because I'd love to see. All right, now I'm going to use a couple shades of these kind of like brownish gray. I've got 113, which is like a beautiful mouse color. It's a beautiful mousy color. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. I'm going to color in all of their fur with this. But you'll notice when we go to blend it using the blending pens, it's uh, it's so much easier to control than with water, especially on a stamped image. I generally would like a, like to use a water brush or a bucket of water and a brush, but when you're dealing with tiny areas on a stamped image, it's difficult to control that way. Or you get too much water and then it's kind of um, diluting it too much. You know, it's just it's nice to be able to have that little more bit of little bit more of control. I just put some gray in there. That's not really what I want. I want the 109, which is a dark brown. That's really not going to hurt anything because it's in the shadow area. So I'm going around with a dark brown in the shadowy areas of the mouse. Um, most of the work I'm going to do is going to be with the blender pen, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I just want to get those shadows in there. Okay, now I'm going to go on to the fan. I'm going to use this um, color 52, and I call it bottle green if I ruled the world because it looks like, you know, old bottles. And I'm adding that to the shadow areas. And these house mouse stamps are cool because they have all the stippling 
and it's easy to see where the shadows would be. But if you want to be safe, you can always just go around the edges. That's a very popular way to color these days. Now, if you find that you're losing detail because you know you want to get close to the edge, but your your pencil's not so pointy, before you sharpen it, go to the areas that aren't too detailed first. You know, so that you can use up that lead, so you don't just sharpen it away and waste it. And I know a lot of people wouldn't bother doing this. They'd rather just have that control all the time. But I'm telling you, you can use this uh, blunt pencil just as well. And actually, there's a pencil sharpener that I've been considering purchasing. It's kind of like the old kind they used to have at school, the kind of the crank ones. And you can do like uh, many different points. So like if you want to, if you like your pencils a little blunter, you can do that. If you like your pencil sharper, you can do that. It's like nine different points or something, but I um, I keep forgetting every time I go to place an order, I forget that I wanted that, so I haven't got that yet. Um, I'm also wondering if they might be a little too rough on these pencils. So now I can go to a point and not waste all that lead, so I'm just pr pretty much getting rid of the, um, the wood on the edges and not so much the uh, actual lead itself. And it may not, it's not a big deal. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but if it means you can get an extra couple of projects out of your pencil before you have to buy another one or, you know, just, it's just, it's just a great habit to get into, I guess. Why waste it if you don't have to? I kind of wait till the last minute to sharpen my pencils. All right. So that should be enough of that green in there, I think. I also want to get that little area there because that's some, looks like that piece of plastic is bigger and might stick out a little bit further. I'm gonna try to stay in the lines. I just kind of almost went out the went out of the lines, a little bit of smudge there, but and I did that with a sharp pencil. It wasn't even a dull one. And then I'm gonna go in here between the tines of the fan and uh, color that plastic in there. I love this color. It's kind of a retro color. This it's almost like when you have it washed out with the blender pen, it almost looks sea foamy. I should name these as I go. Maybe I'll have a career, a new career in product naming. I'm using some gray, this is 119, kind of like a Payne's gray color. You know why? I bet that the, I bet the Spectrum Noirs might have names on them already. I might be, that might not be a position they need filled. Let's see, and I think I'll do a little bit of shadow on this part here with that gray, maybe a little bit there. And really, that's, that's pretty much all we need to color. All right, so we're gonna go in and do the mice first. And I'm going to start with the bullet tip because I'm going to get in and I'm going to do the tails. Now these blender pens contain water and glycerin. And um, this is this is Tombow one I've had for a couple of months and it seems to be pretty good. I've had the little plume ones, those, those just frayed and were a mess um, shortly after I had started using them. The Stampin' Up! ones are great and I've run them dry before. And what I do when I run them dry is I just um, put a little glycerin in water in a cup and I just I just um, put it point down and if the if the tips get all stained I actually just rinse off the tips really well and then I put it in the glycerin water and it let it, I let it wick up into the um, into the pen and then it's good as new so I mean as long as the tips aren't frayed you can keep using it over and over and over again you could also use like a pointy the pointy cosmetic q-tips meant for like I guess putting on eyeshadow, but they're Q-tips. You can use that dipped in a little water and glycerin too. The glycerin acts like a lubricant and it helps the pen slide over your cardstock so it doesn't pill it up. I am using hot press watercolor paper, but this does work pretty good with cardstock. Now I'm gonna go to the brush tip and it looks a little dirty there, but, um, and the reason I have this little, I wanna show that, I have that on my paper on my board because not only does it give me color reference, but it also can help the camera focus a little bit better. I just uh, scribble my pen off on a um, scrap. Even though you can see the tip is a little staining, it's not um, It's not actually color there. It's going to transfer. It's just staining. Green uh, pigment stain a lot. I'm not sure why that is exactly. And I'm just wetting my uh, colors and blending them a bit. Um, you know how I colored it on so it was a little dark on the edges. And you can see that as I color. Now you can add more color with the pen, just like we would with a brush. I can pick up like a little of that brown. Like if I want to add a little more shadow, just pick it right up on the tip of that. I can add it right to their tummy, wherever I want. You can actually use these brushes with uh, decorator chalks, like the pebbles chalks, 
too. You know, it's a uh, that might you know shorten their life a little better. You might need to clean the nib just because it is you know a thicker material, but it does work. But you can see how I can add subtle shading like that a lot quicker than coloring with um, with Copics, which are nice too. I like them too, but. I like the immediacy of this. All right, now to clean this again, I'm off camera, I'm just scribbling it. I have a stack of paper, there's like one little corner sticking out that I'm scribbling my brush on. Um, now I'm gonna go over here to, well, you know what, well, my, I found that kind of grayish brown on my thing. I'm just gonna go and do these gray areas. Very easy. I hope that I'm not shaking the camera because I feel like my table's wiggling. It's the cat, the cats hop on it and they loosen it. It's like a drafting table and they loosen it. All right. So now we're gonna go in and do this beautiful green fan. We'll kind of start where it's most concentrated, then I'll work away as it fades out. You'll see it's so easy to get shadow and highlight this way. A lot quicker and easier than with markers. It's nice to know how to use the different mediums. If you can get several looks from one medium, that's great. And also, you might notice that you like using some mediums more than others. You know, I love watercolor because it's always there. It's always ready to go. It's immediate. You know, everyone has their own, their own style of working. Reach in there, get those little bits. I'm just gonna try to keep the, the uh, blades, not the blades, what do you call it? The grill, I guess, around the fan. Kind of, um, kind of clear. Now it's wicked cute. He's got, he's got his hand on the on-off switch, and he's sending his buddies for a little, for a little ride there. I think that's so cute. I thought about doing the on-off switch in red, but then I thought, you know, I do love red and teal together, but I thought it just might be really distracting. So I'm just leaving it, and somebody can kind of look a little further and see that cuteness on their own. So you know, sometimes you make decisions for aesthetics. This is blending really nice. I can, if I want even more of a gradation, I can go on the edge of my marker so that I'm kind of got, getting that clean area from the edge a little bit more to keep that center light. I'm actually gonna turn this. It's always a good idea to turn your work so you're kind of going, you've got the tip pointing towards the edge. It keeps you from smudging it out. I am working upside down, but it doesn't really matter when I'm coloring. I think it gives you a better angle from the camera too. All right, so I also want to stamp a little sentiment in here, and this stamp, you're going to be mad at me because it's it's an old stamp. I actually just bought it. It's new to me, but it's um, a Stampin' Up! stamp that's retired, and I have a friend who used to sell Stampin' Up! and she was selling all of her retired stuff. Actually, 2007, it's probably retired. I'm thinking maybe it's not. Maybe it was a current product. Now, I can see right there that I have gunk on the edge of that stamp. I'm really going to take this off the block and um, trim it a little closer, I think. But I'm just going to wipe it off so that it doesn't get on my paper. All right, and I'm stamping um, on a hard surface, so I should be all right. I'm just going to press down, straight down, not rocking it. There, and I stamped that with waterproof ink, so that should um, that should be fine. It, got, it, it just rocked a little bit on the end, but I'm not going to worry about that. I really like this for working on the uh, watercolor. Working with the watercolor pencils, I like the Ranger Archival ink. I used to love the Stampin' Up! Black um, ink because it was waterproof, but they changed it. So now I haven't tried the new um, the new refill, so I'm not sure if how it's gonna work. So while I'm just making sure this is drying, I am gonna put together the card. So I'm gonna fold my craft card base in half here. This is um, five and a half by six will be the, is the finished size. I wanted to have a slightly oversized, I just didn't want a small, small card because I wanted to make sure there'd be room for the kids to all write in it. And put adhesive. It's funny, I think this, uh, the gun is working better upstairs. I think it was kind of having a hard time downstairs in the cold. We all do, I guess. And I'm probably gonna trim that down a little bit. I feel like, well, we'll see. I'm gonna just put this over to the edge because I might take it downstairs and the trimmer and trim it a little bit more. Now on the inside, I'm gonna make my pocket. I'm not gonna write on it now because I have a, I have a, I can't, performance anxiety, I can't write while people, people are watching. I have terrible hand, handwriting as it is. I have to really be thinking about it. So by gluing three edges, I'll be making a little pocket for a gift card. And it doesn't have to have a gift card, but I like having that option. So I don't think anyone would, would know that there was a gift card missing if you didn't have it in there, but it's, um, it's nice. And then I will be gluing that Right on top. Actually, I could probably do that. I think color that on top. That's what we're gonna do there. There's nothing, not a big deal. 
Of course, if I try not to bend this as I'm working on it. And I'll glue it down right way up. That would be fantastic. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, now we're going to color the thanks. That's a little crooked, I guess. I'm not going to, you know what? Okay, I'm going to fix it. I was going to say I'm not going to worry about it, but I guess if, I, if the glue will release, I will fix it. Yeah, I might have cut something here crooked. Who knows what the crooked layer is? I'm pretty sure something's crooked because that's usually the way I roll. All right, so I'm going to do the thanks in a couple different colors. I've got it in pink and I've got it in teal. And actually, um, this pink on the first one, I used it in the cheeks, but I colored it. I'm going to do a little bit in the cheeks anyway, just to kind of cross reference it. I used a different pink in the cheeks before. So you can go right over these dry. If you decide that you don't have enough color somewhere, you can go right on top of it dry and just leave it. Same as if you were going over it with like a, like a wax based pencil to deepen the color. You can do that with your watercolor pencils too. There's no rule that says you have to. Um, so solidif solidify, sol, I can't think of the word when you make something, when you dissolves, dissolve, that's the word I'm thinking about. When you do, there's no rule saying you have to dissolve anything. There. Okay, so now I'm going to do kind of like a fading treatment. That's pretty popular. I've seen that a lot lately. So I'm just coloring the bottom half of each of these letters. I'm going to use that, that bottle green color too. And you'll notice that it's really easy to get that fade with with the blending pen because you don't have um, you don't have all that water to deal with. And here we go. I'm just going to scribble this off, make sure it's clean. And I'll start in with the green. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see that a little bit better if I zoom in. And focus as soon as you may. There we go. Start with the deeper colors on the bottom. I'm using the brush tip, but probably, you know, the bullet tip would work. Give you a little more control. We'll do the bullet tip for the pink. We'll see what we like better. We'll do a little compare and contrast. Okay, so that's the brush tip. Just scribble off my marker, put the cap on. You always want to cap up your pens so they don't dry out on you. All right, we'll use the bullet tip for the pink and see how that works. So the bullet tip's not going to be quite as juicy. I feel like I'm, I, I feel like it's not liquefying it enough, so it's not like moving it quite as nicely. And I also think that the bullet tip might um, kind of rough up your paper a little bit more, but I'm still, I got that graded look that I like, so, um, so I'm happy with that. So let's zoom back, take a last look at our card. Remember to let me know if you want me to, if you want to see me do the, uh, demonstrate this tutorial. Just if enough people want to just leave a comment, I will do it if it's if anybody has interest on it um, for it, I guess. Oh, I can't talk today. I'm, it's my first video of the day. How sad. Um, so here's our finished card. I haven't written on the center yet. This can be a pocket because I only glued down three sides if need be. And I actually went a little bit darker with my coloring than on the original because I felt like it needed a little bit of a, of a push and also I knew it would be harder for the camera to pick up on the subtle colors. But I hope that helped you. Uh, blender pen, that really is the uh, the secret to the success with this technique. This is a Tombow. Um, I think they're about three dollars or you can use a Dove blender or you can use a Stampin' Up! blending pen. Um, Letraset makes a blender. They're, the tips are a little bigger. I don't think they'd be as useful for a stamper, so, but the Tombow or the Stampin' Up! or the Dove, those should be really good for you. If you have any recommendations, please leave a link below because I know not all the, the products are available everywhere, so um, that will probably help help somebody. Just, you know, if you have a favorite, let us know about it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you like these watercolor pencils, you can find them at Hallmark Scrapbook. I'll put a link below in the video description to that. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like coloring tutorials. And until next time, happy crafting.